Hey, what's up, fellas and malicious female fans? Steve Lish is here, back with the Unihertz Titan Pocket. Listen, the title's going to be Unihertz Titan Pocket versus Blackberry Classic. That's obviously, look, you, you can't go spec for spec with these two. You could go experience for experience, which is something that we're going to do. You could talk about how this is more up to date, all the rest of it. This video is more serving as a life raft for those of you who are holding on to your BlackBerry Classics, waiting for a message from the stars or something, thinking that BlackBerry, or rather Onward Mobility in their comeback, is going to have something comparable to this. They're just not. It's not going to happen. Unihertz Titan Pocket is a device that right now you could get. Now, I don't know how many they're, they're going to make. I don't know how for how long they're going to make them. Go ahead and take the lifeline that you've been given if this form factor is your be-all, end-all in your universe, which is a lot of people. And I don't blame you. There's something to be said for holding this device in your hand. One-handed, simple to use, less distractions, Great for email with the physical keyboard. You're getting work done. A lot of people, when I did the Z Flip 3 videos, were talking about how nice it was to have something that could fold and fit in your front pocket, back pocket, jacket pocket. You know, BlackBerry Classic's been there for years. And I don't think it's unreasonable for people who have the Classic. There were some of you who were still using the BlackBerry Bold 9900 series or earlier. I one gentleman I remember in particular saying, not only did he, he was still using his 9900, but he had a BlackBerry Classic waiting in a drawer for the day when the 9900 gave out. Look, 200 bucks, 219 bucks, 300 bucks, whatever it is when it finally comes out, do yourself a favor, just pick one up. Pick one up, have it in a drawer, have it somewhere when this eventually stops working because for multiple reasons what whether it's something that blackberry does a few months from now in january of 2022 or it's something that carriers do here in the united states even if you can just you're in another country okay and you're able to do calls and text on your blackberry classic not getting data push email notification not exactly what you'd expect that's a different experience. That's not what you're going for. That's not what this device was to you. So as much as we want to hold on to these, start making plans otherwise. And this is a good one. And let me tell you something. You know, aside the obvious advantages that this has, which I'm like, look, Android 11, all the rest of it, okay? Besides all that, yes, this does have a better screen. Bigger screen. I like the way it functions a little bit better better keyboard i'm still going to give the nod to the classic on keyboard this is really good and we'll talk about that in a moment but i'm still going to give the nod to the blackberry classic just a classic feel it's thinner nicer in the hand the other advantage that blackberry classic has that it gives you is the optimization of apps so all of these apps if you deal with the darkness here all of these apps were optimized for blackberry os blackberry 10 so they're used to having that aspect ratio there on these devices but there's an optimization level there that even though they try with the unihertz titan pocket okay it's not just android 11 as we talked about in the review that they slapped on top of here and said best of luck dealing with the 3.1 inch display they haven't done that They've done their best, and I showed it in Pokemon Go. They've done their best to try at least to scale some of the apps so it makes sense. But it's still nothing like this. It's still nothing like the Twitter experience was on here. Because remember we showed, I think I showed Twitter on here. Make sure I did. Right? How small everything was. If we could get that to focus. Just the heart, everything, even the bottom row. Nothing like what it was over here where you basically had everything filled out to the corners and the edges. But I'll tell you what, having gone back to this for a little bit, used it, 
you kind of miss the capacitive keyboard. You kind of miss it. I found myself wanting to kind of go like this. I understand I could use the trackpad and all the rest of it and go back and forth, but it brings up that mouse feature and the mouse functionality, which just isn't the same. Just isn't the same. So I really found myself, you know, I've been loving it since the Passport. Obviously, a lot of people have. But to have it on the smaller form factor is quite nice. I like what they've done with the programmable key. I like the fingerprint sensor. You get used to. The keyboard's really good. Just because I say the classic keyboard is better, I do like on the smaller form factor having the larger space bar. I really do. I, I got used to the smaller space bar on the Passport, but the Passport overall was just a bigger device. So you had it where you didn't feel like you were missing as much. On the smaller form factor, this is literally the size of, less than the size of my thumb, thumbnail, trying to hit that space bar. So occasionally, I'll be missing it. So I do miss the bigger space bar. And yeah, I miss the button layout. Okay, whatever it was, copyright reasons, they couldn't use exactly the same button layout. You get used to this. The one that annoys me the most isn't even the function or the symbol or the, the, this, the capitalization actually isn't terrible. The one that bothers me the most is the alt key. I would have liked that somewhere over here because it's just, that's the muscle memory that's dying the hardest, I gotta tell you. Because if the alt key were over here, kind of make it work, right? Because you don't need the capitalization. You can always just hold the letter and have it work. But the alt key, it, you know, it's kind of, kind of an issue. So I've been struggling with that. But aside from that, if you're a classic user, and you're using WhatsApp, and you're using Uber, banking apps, okay, that you may be, I don't even know how you're getting by with banking apps on the version of Android that this runs, the, ver the runtime that it runs. That I don't even know, okay? But if you're somebody who's been reluctant to upgrade to anything else, this is your chance. Might be your only chance. And like I said, once this run is gone, you know, I don't know how long Unihertz is going to be around. And regardless of whether they update it or not, and where they have Android versions and security patches, all it's doing a heck of a lot better than this. And it will for years to come. It's got HD voice. So you put your AT&T SIM in it here in the United States, they're not immediately shutting you down. The one thing that was annoying to me, I like the fact that you can set up the, the keys for launching, just like you can in, in well, on the key devices, which is nice. The one thing that annoyed me the most was that I couldn't get blackberry inbox or blackberry hub or blackberry launcher working on this now i don't know if that was intentional i don't know if they blocked it i don't know what the i don't know if they won't watch you using it if blackberry freaked out they're like oh man we're gonna get a, have another blackberry coming out with all more mobility this year maybe it's the aspect ratio that just doesn't play nice with the 3.1 inch display and all the rest of it i don't know what it is but let me know in the comment section below if you were able to get blackberry inbox or blackberry launcher working on your Unihertz Titan Pocket because I certainly wasn't. But at the end of the day, for its time, this was definitely the better device. But given the improvements that this has made, the stuff that you get, fingerprint sensor, capacitive keyboard, some of the build quality, the build quality is very nice. Very nice. You know, the camera's slightly better. Some of the stuff that and just the future proof, the usability going forward, it's time. It's time. I'm telling that to my BlackBerry friends. It's time to move on. It's time to put this in the drawer, retire it, you know, use it for a Wi-Fi email device for a while. Still the best email experience, period, ended on a mobile device. Right? The typing is very nice here. But that email program, if they could get inbox over here, and have the hub over here. It's a different, a different experience for sure. But for me, it's time to move from the classic to Unihertz Titan Pocket. It's end of the line. This is the last lifeline you're going to be given. The last life raft before the boat sinks. As far as keyboard, physical keyboards concerned, in this form factor, in this form factor, you know, onward mobility might bring us something. Years down the line, if they're somehow successful with their first keyboard device and they get fancy and they make another Passport or another Classic, but for years to come, this is the only ball game in town.
So take advantage while you can. If you've made it this far, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Until next time, have that Steve-alicious day.